So, ladies and gentlemen, flick rolling down the diving 45, straight towards us. Lauren Richardson in the pit special. of the vertical, letting it decay into a, a lopsamac over the top and into a flat spin, one, two, two and a half turn spin, rolling out the bottom of that. Two flip rolls at the top of the loop, that's called an avalanche, and then changing direction on the way down the side of the loop. Go back along what we call the A axis, now an aerobatic flying A axis runs right to left in front of you, B axis runs towards and away from you from the centre point. Up to the vertical, hanging it on the propeller into what we call the torque roll. And you think keeping the aircraft rolling there was actually the torque from the engine and the propeller. Not only a phenomenally strong aeroplane, it has to be to take this kind of aerobatics. Capable of being stressed at plus 10 and minus 8, I believe, these particular airframes. Also extremely light. Now the light weight of the airframe, combined with that big engine, gives her this enormous vertical performance. In a lot of aerobatic aircraft, you're trading height for speed. You're riding what's known as the, the energy train. Lovely flick roll down the diving 45. Uh, back up to the vertical, hanging on the prop for a thing called a tail slide. Ooh, cut two fuselage lengths backwards there. Only other fixed wing aeroplane I know that can go backwards like that is a carrier, of course. But... As I said, very lightweight, 180 horsepower, giving it this big vertical performance because it needs that to be able to do these kind of aromatics. It takes a tremendous amount of energy. Now you'll notice there are two very different types of roll on this aircraft. There's the aileron roll where you simply push the stick to one side, the aileron is deflated and the aircraft rolls around its longitudinal axis. There you go, that's a hesitation aileron roll where she's just doing parts of a roll, one after the other. Over the top of the Humpty Bump to come back on the A. Now the hesitation roll going up the vertical, what's she going to do at the top? Ah, stall turn. Ready for the rudder at the top, just let the aircraft pivot round its uh, centre point. And as I said, very interesting, there's the two different types of roll, you'll see the, the slow aileron roll she was doing there, another hesitation roll, again that's just ailerons at work, and then sometimes you'll see the aircraft suddenly pitch up, there, she's pulling about a bag of spuds there, about five pound on the stick, and then kicking off full rudder. Now you don't mess about, you've got to be an absolute welly full of rudder in. Because what happens is the secondary effect of rudder is roll, and it causes the aircraft to auto-rotate along its longitudinal axis, which have much faster roll rate. Right? And that is a flip roll. There you go, you see the aircraft actually stalled and is flicking around its longitudinal axis on the effect of rudder. So half loop, full flick roll to the top, finishing the loop. Back up to the vertical. That's a beautiful torque roll. The torque from the propeller keeps the aircraft spinning as it's moving backwards. Because of course there's no aerodynamic control because the aircraft's moving in the wrong direction. Pushing around the outside of the half loop there, over the top. Negative G all the way around that manoeuvre. Difference between positive and negative G is when you pull on the stick to pull the nose up like she's doing here, to pull around that corner. So 
So she's pulling positive G at the moment. That means all the blood in her body is trying to get into her feet. Going around that half loop you saw earlier, she was pushing on the stick. That's negative G. And all the blood in her body is trying to get into her head. That's not only really incredibly uncomfortable, it can be very dangerous if you hold it for too long. So negative G used much less in aerobatics than positive G. You build up your G-tolerance, because of course lightweight aircraft like this, you can't afford the weight of something like a G-suit to help you take that amount of G. You build up your G-tolerance by practicing locking muscles in your body, clamping muscles in your body. And would you believe screaming helps, I've been told. <laughs> 